Okay, uh, let's continue. Uh, so first, I thought for first few minutes I'll uh, discuss something related to the problem set. So if you recollect, uh, in the end of the last class we looked at this structure. Right. So here uh, we saw that uh, if I ground this terminal and look at the resistance here, or uh, ground this fellow and look at this resistance here. How are the two resistances? They were same. And uh, why did we argue that this will be same? Sorry? Yeah, as we mentioned, we noticed we have essentially uh, two terminals here. If I erase this. And it's essentially how many port network? One port network. So you just have one voltage and one current. And this is a linear one port network, so this voltage will be linearly dependent on the current. So this is essentially an equivalent resistance or an impedance. So that's why it doesn't matter whether you ground this and look here or ground this and look from here, both will be same. Right? And uh, another example for this is this structure. So here again, I have only two terminals. So it doesn't matter whether I ground the bottom terminal and look at the resistance from the top or I uh, ground the top terminal and look at the resistance from the bottom. Both will be same and what will be the value of this resistance? 1 by gm. Parallel. 1 by gm, yeah 1 by gm being parallel with R0 but for all practical purposes this is 1 by gm assuming uh, this is in saturation. Right? So uh, point is anytime you see this thing in the circuit, the first you know uh, reflex will be should be to replace it with an equivalent resistance of whatever values. Okay. Okay. So at this point, I expect some question, but since no one is asking that question, I'll ask it and answer it myself. Let us say now you consider this fellow now. So here also one might argue that I have two terminals, right? But if I let us say look at the resistance from here, what is that? I mean, if include R0, let's R0, R0 right. Now, let us say I ground the top terminal and look at the resistance from the bottom. What is that approximately? So, why are these two not equal? So what is going wrong in a. Huh? Current depends on the uh, gate terminal. Correct. So, I mean, it is so correct. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, okay, what he is pointing out is this. So, although I have, I mean, marked only two terminals, oops, notice that I have a third terminal gate. Just because I connected that to ground doesn't mean that it doesn't exist, right? When I talked about one port or two terminal network, the idea was I just have one voltage and one current, and the current dependent only on that single voltage. Whereas here, I have this terminal which is grounded, so this acts like a reference terminal for you. So we have two ports now. So the current here depends on both the voltages, right? So which means you can't replace it with a single resistance. It is now a two port network, you know the equivalent circuit, okay? So only when you have a case where the current depends only on one voltage and if it's a linear network, you can replace it with an impedance. So just you know some uh, point to be wary of. Similar way you can argue what will happen in this case. I'll leave it as an exercise. So this was another problem I gave you. Here also you can see if, uh, argue and see if you can replace it with a single resistance or you cannot. This is up to you, you can, you know, like reason and think. Okay. Great. So then I thought I will just do one problem from here, maybe just to show how things can be done fast. So let us say here I ask you to find the resistance, right? Again, as I mentioned, one thing is to, you know, like, uh, apply the test voltage, write KCL, KVL and do it. But the way I might want you to do is the following way. So if I apply a test voltage VT, what will be the gate voltage? AVT. So I can think of it like this, as though I apply two different voltages, A times VT at the gate and VT at the drain. I just need to worry about the current in this voltage source 
due to both of this right let's try to find out without you know drawing any equivalent circuit so uh, try to argue with me now again it's a linear network two voltages what do you do okay so let's say we start with uh, yeah let's start with this voltage so again uh, remember that this is grounded now this is made zero so i apply a times v test what will be the incremental current here yeah a v test times gm2 correct now this current has two parts to flow one is the intrinsic r0 of the transistor that is r0 2 and other is the impedance looking here and what is the impedance looking up it is 1 by gm because the drain is incrementally short okay. so uh, then tell me what should be the test current now what will be the equivalent current flowing here or in this direction okay it is ro2 by okay let me mark it here this impedance is what 1 by gm of m1 gm1 so what is the current now ro2 by ro2 plus 1 by gm1 times avt gm2 that directly gives you one part of the current is this clear this is essentially the response uh, of this voltage source to the test current it that is only one half of the job so what should i do for the next thing i will short this thing again uh, in your mind assume that this is short i am finding the current flowing here so here this gate is incrementally short so what does this configuration remind you of it's a cascode you directly know the resistance looking down what is that yeah it is uh, strictly this r01 plus r02 plus gain times this resistance but in this case what will this approximately be equal to yeah i can i mean if you uh, basically it's r01 plus r02 plus gm1 r01 r02 but in this case i can approximate this nicely as right so here that what should be the final test current now what should be the current due to this voltage now vt by this entire thing gm1 r01 r so this way i mean without drawing any equivalent circuit you should be able to ideally uh, write it so what is the equivalent resistance now can you tell me yeah i mean yeah vt by it yeah what is that i mean okay i have two components so how will you write it i mean i find that uh, i test is some v test by some k k1 plus v test by some k2 so what is the equivalent resistance k1 in parallel with k2 so what are the two components here what is the resistance due to this part gm1 r01 r02 in parallel with what is the contribution from this term well remember i should take the whatever portion is there vt by whatever is there is what i should consider so that will be 1 by a gm2 times whatever r02 by this again uh, for all practical purpose how can you approximate this as which one do you think will be larger which one do you think will be smaller i have two terms which resistance do you think will be larger huh left one why i mean i already have r not that r not is getting multiplied by intrinsic gain this is significantly larger than what i have here here i have 1 by gm and not even 1 by gm i have 1 by a times gm correct so how can i approximate this as now i have two resistance a very large resistance and a very small resistance so what will be what will this be approximately equal to so which is 1 by a gm2 so i mean very guys able to follow how i did it i mean ideally i mean uh, this is how i want you to do it 
see i'm sure everyone in this class will be able to you know draw the equivalent circuit of this with a you know vccs current source i mean vccs and resistance you apply test voltage here you write kcl and solve for it i'm sure everyone will be able to do it but i want you to guys i want you guys to develop this understanding of directly writing the result based on existing results you know that's how gets you some more understanding of what's happening here now you kind of see that if i apply a test voltage here a times test uh, v test is applied here that draws a current of a times v test times gm2 that is resulting in approximate impedance of 1 by a gm2 if you just write you know replace everything with vccs r not and write kcl kvl you might not be able to get this overall understanding that's what i'm getting at. again in the first shot you might not be able to do it but the hope is as you solve more and more problems you try to develop this okay okay cool so uh, yeah i think there was one other confusion i'll the uh, question so i just clarify it yeah i think there was some confusion regarding what do i mean by up and down resistance so let me maybe clarify that so here uh, when i asked what is the up and down resistance loosely speaking by down resistance i mean what is the resistance i have looking down right so if i were to define it in a more uh, strict sense so let me redraw this once again so i'll have this say m1 m2 so to find the equivalent resistance looking into this node what will i do i mean okay i mean to find the effective resistance what is the experiment you do typically apply a test voltage and find the current so let's say you do that right so the way i can think of this experiment is like this i can say that let me erase this i have applied two voltages like this a v test here and another we test here both are same the same single voltage source i have basically split as two so now now i will try to find the current here i'll call it as up current this i'll call as down current okay. and just to you know like uh, warn you note that this up current ideally might have contribution from both this voltage source and this voltage source similarly the down current will have contributions both from this voltage and that voltage okay so you have to take into account the contribution of both the voltage sources in up and down current okay. then you can define what is r up r up you can define as uh, v test by the up current similarly the down resistance is v test by down current of course but in this simplistic circuit obviously uh, this voltage source will not impact the down current similarly this voltage source will not have any impact on the up current but in general it can happen right so here what is the up and down resistance can you tell me up resistance is what 1 by gm 1 i mean please remember to include the subscript of the transistor because that's way that's the only way we can distinguish which transistor we are referring to and what is r down approximately r not so at least here you can by inspection you should be able to see it if it's more complicated you can decompose it and find it great so then move on let's move on uh -huh. yeah i mean you find out right uh -huh. yeah i think it might have been a minus 1 times gm i think i i might have given as a plus 1 gm yeah that's a mistake on my part yeah okay 